Hello everyone, welcome back to BioCaryon. We were talking about G-protein coupled receptors present inside our cells. In the human genome contains about 720 to 800 G-protein coupled receptors in one genome. This is the large, largest class of receptors present in our genome. G-protein coupled receptors contains, uh, span the membrane seven times and these are also known as serpentine receptors. Once a signal comes in binds to the N terminal of the G protein, the C terminal activates a cascade of enzymes within uh, inside the cell. If we consider this, this is the inside of the cell and this part is the outside of the cell. In the last class we discussed the trimeric G proteins which are being activated by uh, when signal coming to these G protein coupled receptors. There are four classes of trimeric G proteins. One is G alpha, second is stimulatory, one is G alpha stimulatory, second is G inhibitory and third class is GQ and fourth one is G1230 that we have written over here. Right? In the last class we discussed about G alpha stimulatory and G alpha inhibitory class. If you want to study about these you can go back to my YouTube channel and find out these two. Today we will discuss this GQ uh, class. Now, suppose the signal comes and binds to this N terminal. So, at the C terminal, it will activate the GQ class. GQ class is a trimeric G protein containing three protein subunits. One is G alpha, and second one is G beta, and third one is G gamma, making it trimeric. Right? Now, when signal comes and attaches to it, uh, initially these three are they are bound to each other. Right? Now, due to signal coming to these the foundation will be removed and instead of GDP which was initially bind, GTP molecule will come and bind to this alpha subunit. Now when GTP subunit binds, so this GQ, this becomes activated, right? And uh, after activation, uh, there is a plasma membrane. Suppose I draw the cell completely like this. So there is a plasma membrane bound enzyme that is known as phospholipase C beta please understand you have to remember this beta term phospholipase C beta this is lipase Lip the function of lipase enzyme is to cleave the lipid bonds to cleave lipid molecules so this GQ alpha it activates this phospholipase C beta enzyme now uh, Activation is phospholipase C beta enzyme. This cleaves um, P I one more molecule is present that is P I P two. Phospho uh, this is phosphatidyl in ositol four five biphosphate. It cleaves this molecule into two molecules. This will act over here. Cleaved into two molecules and. Uh, if I draw the cell membrane like this, two molecules, one is known as DAG, diacylglycerol, and the second molecule which is made is uh, uh, IP3 in ositol 1,4,5 triphosphate. Now this DAG molecule, this remains attached to the membrane itself and this IP3 molecule, it moves inside mm, uh, it uh, moves inside the these two are second messengers right uh, and this goes to the endoplasmic reticulum right to the cells endoplasmic reticulum suppose I'll, I'll draw endoplasmic reticulum like this inside the endoplasmic reticulum this IP3 goes like uh, IP3 uh, on the surface of the cell there are certain channels and when IP3 comes and binds to these channels, suppose this is the IP3 molecule, so these channels will open. And these channels are actually calcium channels. They are actually calcium channels, calcium ion channels. So as a result, calcium will, lot of calcium ions will come into the cytosol, right? Now, this calcium ion into the cytosol is very important. 
there are many functions of this calcium ion first this calcium binds with this diac molecule diacyl glycerol molecule along with a phosphatidyl serine calcium plus dag plus phosphatidyl serine and it will activate protein kinase c remember in g protein coupled receptor in gs pathway protein kinase a was activated here protein kinase c is activated all protein kinases further activate serine and threonine residues inside the cell and this will further start many transcription pathways inside our cell this is one function of calcium molecule right second function of calcium molecule is calcium binds to a protein that is known as calmodulin inside the cytoplasm suppose i draw calmodulin molecules like this i draw calmod this is the calmodulin molecule right so calcium binds to calmodulin molecule and brings about a conformatory change in the calmodulin molecule there is a conformatory change over here right after the conformatory change i will write over here conformatory change after the conformatory change in the calmodulin molecule it can perform a range of functions right it this conformatory change uh, will activate many kinds of kinases inside the cell right one important kinase is cam kinase 2 cam kinase 2 this stands for calcium calmodulin kinase 2 right this is responsible for enhancing the transcription cascade for short term and long term memory of our body long term memory in our brain so calmodulin in old age if calcium is less so memory is also weakened why this is so because uh, calcium if if it is less it will not bind with calmodulin and less binding will with calmodulin which will result in less amount of short term and long term memory will be weakened because of less amount of calcium right again calcium plus calmodulin met, uh, is responsible for metabolism if you remember in old age metabolism is also weakened because calcium is loosened cal the amount of calcium is lowered in our body so metabolism also lowers down right smooth muscle contraction this is responsible for smooth muscle contraction so if anybody is having calcium loss in the body there will be less amount of smooth muscle contraction so if we say uh, joint pain in old age uh, and uh, uh, pain in knees is all because of this less amount of calcium in old age and this is all dependent on this g protein coupled receptor present in the membrane right next class is g12 13 recently another trimeric g protein g1213 has been discovered we are talking about again another g protein coupled receptor that is g1213 recently this has been discovered now what this does um mm. uh suppose here is the trimeric g protein that is uh, g12 say and this is also g12 alpha and this is beta gamma and gdp is bound to it right so what happens some g protein coupled receptors they activate uh um mm, they activate g protein they activate this g12 right how activation of g12 will occur these two instead of gtp gtp comes and binds over here and the coupling of these two is removed so this g12 
the function of G12 is not talking about uh, talking about any other membrane bound receptor. What it does, it binds to another protein in the membrane that is known as Rho GEF. This is a Rho dependent protein, Rho GEF. This is guanine nucleotide exchange factor. Rho GEF is Rho guanine nucleotide exchange factor. Guanine nucleotide exchange factor, what it does, it further activates, uh, there is a protein known as Rho A protein which is bound to GDP in inactive form. Remember, inactive forms are always GDP bound. This is present in the cytosol. Rho GEF activated by G12 alpha brings this to the plasma membrane. This comes to the plasma membrane. GTP comes and binds to it. It becomes active and this Rho A protein becomes active. Now this Rho A protein is very important in the in maintenance of active cytoskeleton inside our body. Right? What are its functions? What it does, the Rho GEF protein, if I write the functions over here, it first thing, this Rho GEF protein, it further activates a protein that is known as ROC. That is known as ROC. This ROC protein is responsible for this protein, I have a star over here, right? This is responsible for formation of actin, formation of actin stress fibers. So when actin fibers are formed inside the cell, then cytoskeletal contraction occurs. Cytoskeleton contraction occurs. And when cytoskeletal contraction occurs, then cell contraction also occurs. Right? So for actin cytoskeleton maintenance is dependent on the G protein coupled receptor. Second thing is phosphorylation of myosin light chains. This is myosin light chain. Phosphorylation of myosin light chain has same effect. It results in cytoskeletal contraction and cell contraction. Right? So these are two important functions. One is of GQ and another is of G1213. Right? One more class of trimeric G protein is there that is GT. GT stands for transducin and this type of G protein coupled receptor is responsible for vision. It comes, this one, sometimes written as GIOT, but this is not an inhibitory G protein. Mm. We can discuss this also in, the, in this lecture itself, that is trimeric G proteins. Now what happens for vision, a protein known as rhodopsin is required. And this rhodopsin pr protein, this cell, what cell is this which I am drawing? This is suppose this is a rod cell present inside the eye. This is a rod cell present inside our eye. This rod cell has a seven membrane binding protein that is known as rhodopsin. Right? Rhodopsin protein has a light absorbing pigment that is known as opsin. Right? Opsin absorbs the light, so this signal over here, this signal is light signal. When this light signal is absorbed by this rhodopsin protein, right, it activates a trimeric G protein that is known as GT. T stands for a molecule that is known as transducin, activates transducin, also known as GT, right. Now activation of this transducin protein converts it uh, to this G protein. Uh, initially GDP was bind. So after activation, GTP is going and come to bind to this. Right? So if we draw it schematically, so this will be, this is GT beta gamma and this is GT alpha. 
GTP protein is bound to it, right? And this is beta subunit, this is gamma, this is alpha subunit. That is why it is known as GT alpha. And this part, the alpha subunit, is bound to the membrane, right? So this activated GT alpha is responsible for further signaling. This GT alpha it further activates one enzyme that is present again in the membrane. Uh, again present in the membrane that is known as phosphodiesterase. Right? Now function of phosphodiesterase enzyme is to convert cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP into GMP molecule. Right? Cyclic GMP, what it does, it controls sodium channels inside the cell. Suppose here channel is present for sodium channel. Right? So if amount of cyclic GMP is high, the sodium channel remains open. Right? If sodium channel remains open, so there will be sodium influx inside the cell. And remember, sodium influx is responsible for depolarization of the cell. Now what happens when cyclic GMP is converted into GMP, the cyclic GMP levels are lowered inside the cell. If cyclic GMP levels are lowered, then this sodium channel will be closed. Right? If this sodium channel is closed, means sodium cannot go inside. There is loss of sodium over here. So the condition is known as there is not de no depolarization. Hyperpolarization will be there as a result of light coming and acting on the rod cells. Now it is not that that the rod cell will always remain hyperpolarized. Right? This channel, sodium channel, is also permeable to calcium. Right? So closure of sodium channel will lead to loss of calcium inside the cell. If calcium is level, lowered, if calcium level is lowered, then an enzyme inside the membrane that is known as guanyl cyclase. Enzyme is guanyl cyclase. It acts on this GMP and makes it convert into cyclic GMP. So cyclic GMP levels will be restored. Again this channel will open and sodium and calcium can come inside. If calcium comes inside, this will be again deactivated. So in this way, the rod cell hyperpolarizes, then depolarizes, then hyperpolarizes. All depends on G protein coupled receptor rhodopsin which is activated by light right so this is leave this part so whatever i have drawn here this is about the gt class of g protein coupled receptors G uh, gt class of trimeric g protein that's it thank you